We are currently in the lab of Cat's Crystals, who is going to be showing us how to crystallize Megalodon teeth and other unique fossils or animals. So we're super excited to see this magician at work. Not a magician, scientist. Scientist at work. Let's get to it. So today we're going to be crystallizing two Megalodon teeth. These are commission pieces, and we're going to be crystallizing them in something called more salt. And when more salt is done, it has this really pretty seafoam green color, and it looks something like this. I don't use any dyes in my crystals unless somebody requests a very specific color, like hot pink. Um, <laughs> in which case, I can use some food dye on a clear crystal. But this natural green color, it comes from the iron that's inside this. And I'll go over what chemicals make up more salt as we get started. The first step in making any crystal is we need to use some clean water. So I like to get gallons of distilled water. I know that this water uh, doesn't have any like gross bacteria or in, in it. And if you use sink water, there's a possibility that your water or your crystal solution is gonna mold over time. So we try to keep everything as clean and sterile as possible. So the distilled water goes into my water heater upper. Very scientific of you, Kat. Oh yeah. <laughs> And we don't need to fill it all the way up because we're only going to be doing about 300 milliliters of solution today. <laughs> Nothing like waiting for water to boil. Some of these crystal pieces look so good. I just want to eat them. Hey, don't eat the science. Sorry. More salt is a combination of two salts that we're going to use today. The first one is iron sulfate or ferrous sulfate and the next one's ammonium sulfate. So these two are going to combine in the solution and make a double salt. So let's measure out some of each. I am so thankful for this magnetic stirrer, stirrer, -er, stirrer, stirrer. -er. So scientific again. <laughs> uh, before I got this thing, I had to hand mix all of my solutions. So right now we just added the ammonium sulfate uh, to the water, the hot water. So it's really important that your water is hot. It doesn't necessarily need to be boiling, but it needs to be really hot when you're making your solution for this uh, particular crystal because it allows the crystals, like these little powder gas, to break down into the water faster and allow the water to absorb more of the crystal solution. So if your water was very cold, you would see a lot of powder on the bottom that would not be dissolving, just like you can't add sugar to cold coffee or cold tea. This is iron sulfate. You can see that this compound has a greenish tint to it already. The iron is what gives it the green color. So when we mix it with our ammonium sulfate, it will turn that solution kind of a greenish brown color. And we'll see that in just a second. That's the grossest looking tea I've ever seen. <laughs> I've noticed so far that you've got a bunch of different crystals with different colors and it seems like you have different methods to do it. What kind of process did you have to go through to learn how to create these different crystal solutions? So the first thing I did was a lot of research. I looked up what were the easiest crystals that you can grow at home, which happened to be sugar and borax crystals, not together. They're two separate crystals. <laughs> and uh, so from there I just would look up one crystal, order the supplies I needed, and trial and error it. So, um, like, for example, the more salt took me much longer because there's multiple steps and multiple chemicals. And my first more salt crystal did not look anything like this one. Um, definitely takes time. So once you master, master one crystal and you learn the techniques of how to grow it, you can then apply it to a more complicated process, a more complicated process, and then you just kind of grow your repertoire from there. Over here we have some experiments that I have been working on. This crystal here, this red one, is called potassium ferrocyanide. It's not as dangerous or as crazy as it sounds. This compound is actually used in the film industry to help develop film or some kind of compound in film. Uh, it has a brilliant ruby red or cherry red color. And like again, this is not dyed. I didn't dye this crystal. This is just the natural compound. I Iron, when it's 
combined with different elements, just like anything, will have different properties. So here it's red. In the iron sulfate, it's uh, green. And there's another one called ferrocyanide, and that chemical is yellow. So very different. All three have iron, but all three are different colors also. So you're sure it's not a piece of candy? It's not a piece of candy. Dang it. <laughs> And here we have some Eglinon teeth that I've been working on for a couple weeks now. This is their fourth crystal bath that they've been in so far. And you can see we've got some pretty significant crystal growth. Uh, these are really, really dark purple crystals. They're called chrome alum or chromium potassium sulfate. Uh, they have a really cool tetrahedral structure. structure so they kind of look like square pyramids. I don't know if you can see that one like way up there. Oh, yeah. That's pretty. Yeah. So these are really, really dark. Uh, they can range from lilac, light purple, to really, really dark, almost black purple, like we've got here. And these two teeth are probably the biggest teeth I've crystallized so far. You wanna check out the other one too? Sure. Ooh, that is one awesome looking fossil. Yeah, so again, these aren't the final product, they're about Oh, they're almost there, but not quite. So after this, they'll come out of the bath in about uh, like one to two days, we'll check on them. And from there, we'll do some cleanup touches, seal them really well, and then they're gonna be ready to go to their new homes. Cool. Let's take a look at our iron sulfate, ammonium sulfate solution that we've got going on right now. This is nowhere near as beautiful as the crystals we showed you earlier. It's not green at all. So to help the iron dissolve more readily into the hot water, we actually add a third compound, sulfuric acid. This is highly concentrated sulfuric acid. I only use about one milliliter per uh, 100 milliliters of solution. So in this case, we started with 300. I know it looks like we're almost at four, but we want the solution before we added all the compounds to it, so just the water. So I added 300. So I add about one drop per each. 100 milliliters in this case, three drops. So right now I'm checking the temperature of the solution. We cannot add sulfuric acid to a hot solution. It will bubble and spit out, hence why I'm wearing my goggles and my face mask and my really thick gloves. No joke to play with sulfuric acid. Uh, once the solution is a little bit cooler, we're gonna add our three drops and we're gonna see a color change. It's not really a chemical reaction per se, it's just the iron becoming more readily soluble in the solution, which is causing it to go back to that green color that we saw. So it's gonna go from this murky brown to the green color. Okay, we're getting our acid ready. Starting to really look like a Starbucks Frappuccino over here. Matcha Frappuccino. You sure this isn't an edible laboratory? <laughs> Our more salt solution is almost done. We can see that it's turning that really beautiful vibrant green color like we saw in the beginning. However, we get really close we can see there's little particulates swirling around in here and there's a little bit of foam at the top. So what's gonna happen now is we're gonna, we're gonna let it sit on the stir for a little bit until that foam kind of goes away. And then we're gonna move it to one of these hot plate uh, cooling stations I got over here. We're gonna let it cool down completely, all the way down to room temperature, and then we're going to filter it with this plastic funnel and a coffee filter. This color right here is the color we're hoping for. It's very light green, and we can see in the bottom all this gunky brown stuff sank to the bottom. And if you get a shot from the top in right here, we have crystals starting to form on the top of the solution, which is good. That means that we added enough uh, of our compounds that there are crystals starting to form, but it's also bad because we don't want crystals to form too quickly. If they form too fast, they'll be small. They won't be very um, distinctive. They'll kind of like- Sugar candy? Cover everything, yeah. And, and too quickly, we don't want that. So we're gonna filter it out into our container that we're planning to put our shark teeth in. I have our shark teeth here on some popsicle sticks ready to go. I had to, <laughs> I had to improvise because I ran out of clips. So we're just gonna good old tape that on there. And here's the other one. So, so these, will, these will lay right on top. If you guys remember, this solution has sulfuric acid in it, which when you 
mix these two things together, sulfuric acid will eat away at this tooth, right? So we only want the part of the tooth that we want crystallized, so in this case, about from here to here, in the solution. And yes, that solution will start to eat tiny holes into the shark tooth. It's not necessarily a bad thing. The crystal will find its way into those tiny little holes that it's making, and it'll start to form. So it's actually helpful because we're roughing up the surface without damaging the rest of the tooth. So they'll kind of lay in just like I have these back here, only touching the solution where we want crystals to grow. I guess it is worth noting that you do want your container that you're crystallizing things in to be pretty clean and the thing that you're crystallizing to be clean. You don't want any contaminants because the crystals will stick to them and not the desired... <laughs> That's Nolly, the science dog. She's also our protector. Yes, Nolly, the guard dog. Here we have our last step of the day. Our shark teeth are submerged into our solution. Just a little bit, you can see right there. Enough where the crystals can stick to it and start to grow. Uh, we don't want the shark teeth to be totally submerged because remember this is a, an acidic solution and we don't want it sitting in there for too long because the acid will start to eat at them. So tomorrow morning we'll come back and check in on them and then over the next couple days we'll check and see how the crystals are starting to grow. Alright, it's been about 18 hours so we're going to check on our crystals that we put in last night. So we'll start with the green ones right here. Here we go. <gasps> it's got baby crystals. It's got bubble crystals. Oh, congratulations, Toofy. Okay, let's check on the other one. Ooh, more baby crystals. They look pretty. So these are gonna sit here for a couple days. We'll keep checking on them. Making sure they're not getting uh, too overcooked. All right, let's check on the purple. It's time for the reveal on the big Megalodon teeth. You've got to be kidding me. Those look like amethyst crystals, cat. I want it. Can I have it? Can I please, please have it? That is so amazing. Look at those crystals. You made that. I did. All of those are going to look like that? I hope so. That's beautiful. Thanks. Jeez. I right, get the rest. The moment we have all been waiting for. Kat has finished her most recent batch of crystal creations and she's gonna take it over from here. So I'm really proud of this batch. Uh, they turned out really cool in my opinion. This one here is the one that we started with in the beginning of the video that was already done. These three smaller ones are the ones that were blank that we have been crystallizing over the past uh, about two weeks. And then these three giant ones up here uh, they're about halfway done when we started the video, and they are just beautiful, in my opinion. I think this one over here is probably my favorite. Get a closer look on that one. Although shark teeth are one of my favorite things to crystallize, they're not the only thing that I crystallize. I actually started crystallizing animal skulls, like this raccoon, about a year and a half ago, and I like making um, dome displays and shelf displays out of them. Over here we also have this beaver skull that I've done recently. If you like what you saw here today, you can find me on Instagram at Cat's Crystals, on Facebook at Cat's Crystals, and on Etsy to purchase some really cool crystal creations. Which are all linked in the description below. At so Cat's Crystals. So go check that out. I had an absolute blast filming this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please make sure to like, share it, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll make sure to see all of you the next time we dig some science. You crazy dog. So cute. She's so cute.